Have you ever played on a live stream besides one that Fiora has run? No. <coughs> Are you willing to use a camera? If you do not have one, we will provide one. Um, I'm willing to buy one. Yeah, it's that, I don't have one at the minute, but that would be fine. What is your favorite Dungeons and Dragons module or dungeon? <laughs> I've never played that actual D and D. Alrighty then. All right then. <clears throat> Let me open up this. Perfect. Welcome to the Wayfinder Foundation, an exclusive adventures guild that sponsors expedition to dangerous and exotic locations all across Eberron, or some of the mundane for our new members. Um, my name is Lord Boroman Ear Dane. I created this foundation, and this is my associate. You see an overweight man in blue overalls eating a sandwich, holding what looks like a wizard's scroll that happens to have a camera poking out of the back end of it that's recording you, while in his other hand, between eating the sandwich, he's scribbling down notes. I'm Greg. We didn't have another wizard intern, so the janitor's taking notes today. Yes, they're kind of using all those spells, unfortunately. Anyway, so... <clears throat> I am glad you're here. Please have a seat and introduce yourself. Who are you? Well, thank you. Um, I am uh, Mark Taylor. I, I'm a, a gentleman of, let's say, varied skills. Some most commonly see me as a simple uh, traveling tailor, but to others, no. I'm known to be able to make things happen quietly. Ah, I see. One of those deft hand types. Perfect. So my question to you would be, what do you seek? What type of accomplishments do you hope to gain adventuring around? Well, I mean, I think any who step through this door would certainly appreciate a little bit of recognition by the end of their time uh, working with you. I uh, That may well uh, help me on, but mostly what I seek is the means to help what is left of my people. I see. So you did mention that you were uh, more of the deft type. If you um, were able to, is there any other type of vocation that you might want to experience? Maybe uh, wielding the powers arcane or perhaps more of the religious type. Do any of those catch your fancy or are you kind of dead set in what you are currently doing? Well, new skills are always uh, appreciated. I mean, let's face it, life can get a little boring when one is set upon one particular path. Um, but I do have certain skills passed on by my mother that I may, uh, may find useful to explore. Interesting. So, you said passed down. What exactly do you mean? To, to this, um, Mark will gesture the palm of his hand towards you subtly. Let's just say During my teens, a certain mark became known to myself. Really? You see him kind... You see the half-elf kind of 
lean forward and look at your arm. Ah, that would be um, House Madani, the um, of detection, correct? You are well versed in these matters, yes. Of course, I travel all over, or I used to travel all over Eberron itself. Intriguing. So, so you can use those for your vocation. So, being deft and aware that sometimes the shadier things have to happen to get things done. Um, have you ever had to kill someone before? <sighs> Killing is such a uncouth thing to happen, but uh, there are times when such things are necessary, I think you'll agree. Very correct. So if you did have to slay a human, how would you do it? Could you describe it for me? Well, there are uh, a manner of means available to one, but... Um, I myself am not adverse to a quiet blade in a dark place. There are some things best left in the shadows. Hmm, that's fair enough. So, the type that you're describing um, must mean you might be, especially with that mark on you, um, you must be someone of some type of note. Where are you from? Uh, sadly, I am from what... Well, <laughs> sadly, I am from uh, the former kingdom of uh, Seer. I... <sighs> the morning lands are now what was my home. Ah, well, you, you have my condolences. The morning has definitely caused, well, those who managed to survive the morning, their country is, well, you're quite lucky in a regard that you weren't particularly there. There's a lot of refugees from that place. Yes, I must admit I did consider joining them, but, uh, I feel my talents are best applied elsewhere so that I may find a means of uh, of helping my people once more. Ah, so if you were able to find a way to stop or recover Seer from the morning, you would wish to do so? I would do so in a heartbeat. We'll get to that and back to that in a moment. So, you described a bit how you would slay a human. Let's do something that adventurers are more apt to deal with. Let's say a large creature, some sort of lizard or drake, not a dragon. Not why wouldn't you wouldn't want to face something that ridiculous? So, I want you all to imagine <laughs> this is years down your career, and you've amassed unworldly powers. I'm going to say, use your imagination. How would you deal with a drake, easily as big as a building, bearing down upon you? If you had any power that you wished, how would you fail such a creature? Well, gaining a position of height would certainly uh, be of advantage, especially if I was to do so unobserved by the creature especially when dealing with those of great, perhaps greater prowess than myself, it's usually better to strike from uh, where you're not seen. Hmm, I see. So y you would try to get to an advantage position and attack from outside its peripheral. Yes, be it behind, be that through some mundane or even arcane means, and like you suggest, the future holds many opportunities. 
for myself, if I had any power that I wished, I would allow the creature to fly straight at me before wielding my hand as it crackled with arcane energy. I would have the heavens above me open up as this massive bolt of effeminate lightning struck the creature, leaving nothing but bones. If I could do such a thing, of course. You, uh, you would certainly be the one in the room to understand these such things. Well, Eberron is a quite a strange place. So, do you believe in any of the deities? Um, do you serve any one of them, or do you um, believe? Uh, let's see. I acknowledge the Sovereign Host, and, uh, well, in my more recent years, my need to travel has lent me towards a certain consideration to uh, Colcoran, although I would hardly call myself devout. I see. So, what truly does motivate you? you? You said that you would want to have some sort of renown. Is that what you seek? Do you seek money, power, reputation? Um, why do you wish to go out and explore the world? Well, as we, as we have discussed, the means to alleviate the plight of my people is perhaps one of the few drives I have left. Now, as we both, as we both know, renown, position, wealth, power, these are all things that make such things possible. And who knows, maybe there is a way of undoing the morning. And if that was to be found, then I would certainly be very keen to investigate that further. Interesting. All right, then. So, as you know, adventuring is a very dangerous profession. If you were able to be at foresight to some sort of means, predict what would happen on your final moments, your final battle or whatever you were do doing, what would be considered your ultimate death? What would happen? Um, what would you be doing? What would you want your traveling companions and family to either see or hear about you as your final heroic moments? I cannot say this is something I have often uh, considered, but uh, yes, certainly that to die protecting something that I hold dear, perhaps, perhaps finding Hmm. This is a curious question. Yes, you know, maybe this this might make it more more easier for you to think about. I have thought of what my ultimate death would be. Um, far to the north, there is the um, winter. It's a cold area. There's the um, ice white island, and north of that is the Wayfinder Tundra. There's a beast fabled to be wandering there, a demon of old. His name is the Frost Father, or the Terragorn. Such beastly and powerful is this creature, he can simply look at you and turn you into a were werewolf slave of his. I would like my final moments to be standing firm against this beast and have us both kill each other in mutual combat. Hmm. I think I think if I must die it would be to protect those I care about the most it would be to make 
a defiant stand against some foe, be it terrible or even mundane, but to know that I was doing something that I consider to be the right thing, to, to perhaps mean something, having having lived so much of my life in shadow, perhaps it would be nice to be remembered to be doing something that I could be proud of. Wow, well, that makes so it's not necessarily what you'd be fighting, but it's the ramifications or the scene of it. You would be happy to go down if it meant you were protecting someone. Yes. If if I knew that what I was doing was in my heart the right thing to do, then I would absolutely stand firm and accept that death. Not willingly, perhaps, for I, I would I would still be fighting in that in the face of whatever that danger is. Oh, but. Yes, I think something something along those lines would, if I dare say, be fitting. Hmm. And sometimes we don't seldom have a choice. So, on a more positive note, so what's your favourite food? Hmm, I must admit, I am partial to uh, to sweet foods, cakes delicacies uh, of, uh, shall we say, far too much sugar. Fair enough. Too much sweetness. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, on the inverse, is there anything or type of food or delicacy that you just despise? You know, I've never really been able to stomach sp foods which are very spicy. A little bit of spice works nicely, but I have seen men eat things which just the smell <laughs> sets my nostrils ablaze. <laughs> oh my. Then, <laughs> then I would tell you to never consume. If you have an incendric and they offer you a spice vine, it literally sets you on fire for about two seconds upon eating it. It's a magical vine. I may well have to avoid that. Well, thank I mean, you for your recommendation. <laughs> it's an experience. Um, however, let's see. So you are from Sia, so I understand that you've definitely lost something with the morning happen. Is this currently something that you hold dear that you just would not be able to part from? Yes. And, and he will go to his pack and uh, pull out of his pack a box. This box, this sewing kit, is something my father handed to me for my 14th birthday. When I first sewed together a garment that he considered passable. This has only ever left my side once and it will never leave my side again. It is the only thing I have left of my old life. Interesting. It's always good to have something that you can have attached to yourself. So, in your past, as it seems like, especially when you, when, in my experience, those of a, I'm not going to say shady nature, but those who have been in the dark, is, is there anything that's happened to you that you would not wish to go back to? be it a place or a group of individuals? My past has put me in conflict with people, certainly, although 
how many of those yet live is ooh, hard to determine as they would have to have escaped what has befallen my home. Hmm. Uh, although some of them, some of them may have had the power to do so. And yes, I would certainly have to confess to it being wise to keep an eye over my shoulder from time to time. That's fair enough. Yes, well, that happens. That is life, unfortunately. Um, but is there something in your past that you regret that you wish to share? Well, I mean, we all have regrets, don't we? But, uh, yes. Let's just say in the service of my queen, there are perhaps those who were innocent caught up in the schemes of those with more power and comfort than perhaps they were deserving of who because of my interference those innocents were <sighs> caught up with shall we say hmm. it yeah. is not something i am proud of but given given who it protected, given that it kept my home stable, I think I would do them over again. Well, involving your past or even Seer itself, is there anything you're afraid of? There are those who, so I spoke of people who may have had the power to still live. Correct. They, they would know that I survived. If they were ever to be of a mind to follow through with some of the things they said, now that the rule of law no longer binds them so tightly, they would perhaps cause great difficulty or even death upon myself and those I associate with. Well, it has been said that those who do survive the morning, their minds may be addled, so you'll have to be careful. Indeed. Well, hmm, intriguing. So, you had said that you don't necessarily follow any type of deity, correct? Mm, to, uh, to an extent. But you're familiar with the Sovereign host. That would be correct. So, what would you do in a situation in which, because you know that sometimes greater demons and different types of that type of shadowy ilk have, in the past during the Age of Demons, um, one of the reasons that it was so ridiculous was they found a way of sealing away the good deities for a specific amount of time. So, I want you to imagine that is going to happen again that some sort of greater demon is going to lock away the good deities and cause mass death. You're in a situation where you must either sacrifice your friends to stop the ritual or allow the ritual to go through and fight the beast yourself with your friends. Knowing that if you decided to fight the beast yourself, 
the gods themselves would be lost. What would you do? Hmm. Curious. Well, as I have said before, while I acknowledge the sovereign host, I could myself live without. So, then it would become a case of what is gained by stopping the ritual? I presume that ritual... Hmm, I think... I think on balance I would rather tackle this particular evil with allies. Though that said, how many of them would still be my allies if I took an action that allowed the ritual to be completed? Would well, obviously play into things, but uh, if need be, I would certainly prefer allies to be around me. Although if I had some inputs to say otherwise, then and I believed I could kill the beast without the aid of my allies, then I would certainly, taking that opportunity would certainly uh, certainly be valid to me. Hmm. So going back to what we mentioned about the Mornlands, or Seer rather, you would do anything to fix the morning, correct? Yes, the the plight of my people has uh, just played a toll on my heart. Would you, given the choice, make an agreement with a fiend in order to reverse the morning? Oof. You did say anything. You did. I did indeed. Well, I guess that would depend on what stock I placed in the fiend's words. Well, After all, doing anything is kind of meaningless if I believe that the fiend would go back on its word in some way, or find some loophole to make things unreasonable? Well, fiends, depending on in it, uh, a demon you wouldn't want to make a deal with. A devil, on the other hand, from experience, they go to the word on their contracts. So... Likely to say, if you were guaranteed that they would actually follow through, would you? Hmm. It is still something that would have to be carefully considered. Again, just because something is barred in a contract does not mean that something unmentioned in the bargain would not also happen. I believe the saying is the devil is in the detail. Correct. Interesting. All right, then. So, I don't believe I've asked this this for you before, but is there someone that you... Uh, that you care for? That you either have lost in Seer that you wish to meet again? Maybe a lost love or someone like that you're still looking for? <sighs> I honestly do not know if my parents left in time. They, uh, <sighs> they lived quite close to the edges. It's possible they may have escaped, but <sighs> I've not heard word either way, so 
I do not know, but... And he pats the, the box again. Seeing them again would... Would bring a great deal of joy. All right, then. Well, let's see. So, speaking of which, especially um, your parents and things of that nature, if you could choose to be born as a different race, besides, I believe you are, he kind of leans in a bit, his eyes kind of squinting, looking up and down on you. Half elf? Well spotted. Yes. If you can be a different race, no matter what it was in the entirety of Eberron, would you choose something besides an elf? Ooh. Curious. If everything else was the same, would you enjoy living as a different race? You know something? I've always wanted to know what it is like to fly for yourself, to truly soar through the air under your own power. Really? So there are a large man of beasts that can do such things. Did you have any in mind? Hmm, I guess not particularly, but... Uh... Hmm... Who would I be? As you say, the world offers a wide variety. I guess even, even short term, just something as simple as a bird. Hmm. Just to, just to simply experience that, even if I'd never get to feel it again. So, very well answered. So, on the same manner there, so <clears throat> through your travels, um, especially with um, the way Sia had in the way of technology and magical means, is there ever been a set of equipment or something magical, no matter how fanciful in your dreams that you wish that you could acquire someday, even something that may not even exist? What's something you wish to wield one day? You know, if I could ever be truly a true cloak of invisibility, something or even something that would just nullify, just make me completely unseen, unheard, just so that I might ever observe things, you know, as we've spoken before, I I have in the past and continue to undertake underhanded work, which it would certainly be a boon for, but even when even those times when you just want to truly be by yourself, just shut out the world and not be found, seen, or acknowledged, even just for a, a few minutes. Ah, it would be an interesting use for such a thing. There are things that are of what you speak. Adventure, adventuring, especially throughout the world, is very rewarding, if you know where to look. So, I've asked you many questions about ways you would react to things and things you would think about. Now, here's something else. You see the halfling lean forward. Um, he almost seems to have trouble putting both of his elbows on the table as he's very discerning looking at the moment. Sometimes when you're on an adventure, things happen out of your control. If you had to be cursed, what curse would you pick? <sighs> that is... Oh, wow. I should let you know. You see him move over and the left side, he moves over the left side of his cloak and you can see his entire left part of his body is decrepit 
and seemingly withered away. Sometimes you do not have a choice. Yes. I I had heard I had heard the rumors. I am <sighs> sorry to, uh, sorry that you have to experience such things, especially given how well traveled you are. It happens, but what would you take upon yourself? Hmm. That is truly a tricky question. I guess... <sighs> I wonder if I could deal with something like a, a permanent hunger. Mm. A permanent hunger, you say? There are such things. For example, vampirism is one of which you would be cursed with an unsatable lust for blood. Hmm. It is one that comes with other consequences, I believe. But, uh, yes. Hmm. <sighs> I guess... I guess if I must, that might be any one that sits easier with me to, and I mean no disrespect to you, sir, to lose my ability to act would be a terrible thing. That's fine. Though, let's lighten the mood a bit. So I want you to imagine you're going to get married. If money was no object, what would you do for the wedding? I would find the largest airship I could. And there would be this lavish ceremony. I don't care how cramped it would be, just to be amongst the clouds and the sunshine as we drift along, as we speak our vows. Mm, that would be truly something, wouldn't I believe? Hmm. Interesting. So my next question is probably going to be my last one. It's another one that I'm curious how you would react. So you've experienced a bit of the world. So, I would like you to imagine, on your adventures, you are given the unfortunate task that you must, at the end of a dungeon, there are two people, and you must pick which one is to be slain. If you do not pick one, they both die. As you investigate and go down into the dungeon, you finally come to a room with two individuals shackled. One is an old elf. Very old. In the hundreds. The second one is a goblin child. Which would you slay? Hmm. You know, my kingdom and the goblins do not have a particularly fond history. And yet it is a child. Correct. On the other hand, an elf may be a source of great wisdom to the world. Is there anything which stops me from interacting with either not to attempt any kind of rescue or anything, but to examine closely, to speak to them. Not particularly. It's mostly the decision on which you must choose one to die. 
There's a lot of times when being an adventurer, you're forced to do things very quickly without a lot of information. Ah, so there is a time limit here. Correct. Then I fear I must save the child. That's a very interesting choice. Most do not like goblins. Indeed. But an elf of advanced years, I question why they would be there in the first place. Perhaps it is of no fault of their own, but... Hmm... They've also had their chance to impact the world, perhaps in saving the goblin, they may also have the chance to impact the world, True. maybe for the, maybe for the positive, who knows? Interesting. All right, then. Well, I do believe that is all the questions I have, unless my associate um, has another question for you. If they're still there. <laughs> I am still here. I'm just uh, going over paperwork. No problem. All right, then, well, if there's no other questions, then I do appreciate your uh, candor and your time spent with us today. No, thank you, and uh, I hope my uh, responses give you something useful to think about. Not a problem. Anyways, so that's all the questions that I have. Unless you have a, another question for me, um, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, do the interview. What's up? Say you do accept me within your guild. What would you envisage me doing? Well, the mark you specifically have would be immensely useful i'd have to say it's very rare that you find one of a particular dragon mark willing to go out outside of their specific house to do things if that makes sense i i understand although uh, i suspect you may understand why i'm not overly attached to the house which claims ownership of my mark that's also very true. However, uh, there's always use for one with death fingers and a intuition of investigation. It's better to be safe than sorry on particularly dangerous adventures. When you're not quite sure what is over the next rise or around the next corner. Yes, you never know which goblet can be poisoned. Indeed. Well, I thank you for your time, sir. No problem. And for you, and for you as well. I, uh, I wish you all a good day. Anyways, um, again, thanks for stopping by. If there's nothing else, uh, we're going to get ready for the next one. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> Take right. care. Yep, you have a good one.